Distinguished guests, it gives me great pleasure to attend the 2021 New Economy Forum virtually. On behalf of the Chinese government, I wish to extend warm congratulations on the opening of the forum and best wishes to all participating guests. As we meet, the international environment is undergoing profound changes, and the once-in-a-century pandemic continues to spread worldwide. The global economy has shown some signs of recovery, but its foundation is not yet solid, as evidenced by the acute problems of sharp fluctuations, high fragility, and structural imbalances. The rise of protectionism and unilateralism and the backlash against economic globalization have also added to the uncertainties. In the face of these shifting circumstances, the Communist Party of China and the Chinese government have taken into account both domestic and international environments, followed a coordinated approach the COVID response and social economic development and made some progress in various endeavors. On the domestic front, we have grounded our efforts in the new development stage and applied the new development philosophy to foster a new development paradigm and pursue high-quality development. Following the general principle of seeking progress while ensuring stability, we have focused on managing our own affairs well in response to people's aspiration for a better life. On the external front, we have actively pursued high-level opening up and taken the initiative to share market opportunities with the wider world. We explicitly upheld true multilateralism, resolutely defended the world's common interests, and pushed forward high-quality belt and road cooperation. In the international cooperation against COVID-19, we have honored our commitments and lived up to our responsibility, making major contributions to the global fight against the coronavirus. Last week, the 19th CPC Central Committee successfully convened its sixth plenary session. The session comprehensively summarized the major achievements and historic experience of the CPC over the past century and called upon the entire party and all Chinese people to work even harder toward the goal of building a great modern socialist country in all respects. A review of historical experience, an analysis of the reality, and examination of the trend of the times can all prove that China cannot develop in isolation of the world, and nor can the world develop without China. China will not waver in its resolve to deepen reform and expand opening up. China's development is a great cause that is part of the progress of the entire humanity. Going forward, China will keep its arms wide open provide more market, investment, and growth opportunities to the world, and contribute its part to the building of a noble world economy and a community with a shared future for mankind. Distinguished guests, Amid the complex global situation and tortuous economic recovery, there are also some new trends and opportunities. We need to be more open-minded, think more creatively, and take more pragmatic steps to jointly create a brighter future for the world economy. We need to join hands to fight COVID-19. 
The new dynamics in the COVID situation and response policies are now key factors affecting the global economic recovery. The international community should work in concert and follow a science-based attitude to tackle and defeat the virus. We need to support each other's response efforts and strengthen cooperation in monitoring tools, therapeutic medicines, and research, production, and mutual recognition of vaccines in order to effectively forge a synergy against the pandemic. We need to promote fair and equitable distribution of vaccines worldwide, and in particular, step up support for developing countries to ensure vaccine accessibility and affordability in the developing world and bridge the vaccine divide. We need to embrace the spirit of science, firmly oppose politicization of issues involving vaccines and origins tracing, and jointly build a global community of health for all. We need to join hands to build an open world economy. Openness brings progress, whereas isolation leads to backwardness. We need to promote trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, bring down trade and knowledge barriers, stay away from discriminatory and exclusive rules and systems, and to keep the functioning of supply chains stable and smooth. We need to jointly make the pie of convergent interests bigger, enhance the complementarity and the synergy of our national development strategies and the regional and the international development agendas, and make economic globalization more open, inclusive, balanced, and beneficial for all. We need to improve development philosophies and models, resolve the issue of unbalanced and insufficient development, ensure more equal development opportunities, and make the fruits of development shared by all. We need to join hands to promote a green transition and innovation-driven development. All countries should uphold the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities, earnestly implement the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the outcomes of COP15 of the Convention on Biological Diversity. We need to coordinate efforts in economic growth, people's well-being, energy conservation and emission reduction, and pursue a green and low-carbon transition of the economy in a holistic way. We need to follow the general direction of the ongoing scientific and technological revolution and industrial transformation and harness the power of scientific and technological innovation to drive the transformation and upgrading of economic, energy, industrial and consumption structures. We need to accelerate the conversion of scientific and technological outcomes into actual productivity and make innovation a strong engine propelling economic development and the green transition. We need to join hands to improve the global governance system. A fair, just and equitable global governance system is an important safeguard for the steady growth of the world economy over the long run. We need to follow the principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits, and uphold true multilateralism. We need to support the reform of the WTO in the right direction, support the inclusive development of the multilateral trading system, and support the lawful rights and interests of the developing members of the organization. 
we need to push forward the IMF governance reform to increase the representation and the voice of developing countries and emerging markets. We need to jointly discuss and formulate global digital governance rules, improve the multilateral institutions for digital economy governance, establish basic institutions and normative standards on the property rights, transactions, cross-border transmission, and the security protection of data resources and jointly foster an open, fair, and a just environment for digital development. Distinguished guests, the China-U.S. relationship is a matter of high interest to many. Yesterday, President Xi Jinping and President Joe Biden had a virtual meeting. They had an extensive and in-depth exchange of views on the bilateral relations and other issues of mutual interest, and reached important common understandings. China and the United States are respectively the world's biggest developing country and the biggest developed country. Whether they can handle their relationship well bears on the future of the world. The two sides should act on the important common understandings reached between the two presidents, keep their focus on cooperation, and manage and control differences, so as to bring China-U.S. relations back to the right track of sound and steady growth and contribute to the global economic recovery and world peace and stability. To conclude, I wish the forum a full success.